it is my personal belief that quality detailed instructions are the key to helping beginners learn to solder hey what's happening guys today we are going to look at the final kit that learn to solder kit sent us this one is called blink I figured we would start off by going over the instructions because they are incredibly detailed in this kit easy to assemble 30 minutes or less and of course these kits are available from learn to solder kit Dot com and I will have a link to that down below. So we start off with talking about what's included in the kit. One red LED, one green LED, one blue LED, three resistors, one battery holder, one battery, one circuit board and one switch tells you what tools you may need safety glasses now that is something that you don't see on a lot of electronics instructions it's a good idea you never know if the solder is going to splatter and you know you only get one set of eyes so take care of them solder sucker always good to have around same with helping hands then it talks about the soldering techniques I'll put a link to these instructions down below too so you can download them even if you're not building this kit you know giving this a little read through definitely not gonna hurt anything so it talks about starting with the resistors how to bend them how to put them in and it tells you they are bi-directional or what I like to call non-polarized so they can go in either way no troubles there at all talks about cutting off the excess of the leads soldering the battery holder and see this is very nice because they're telling you things that a beginner might not know don't solder the included battery you know what? if you've never done this before and you thought this looked fun so you ordered this kit you might be tempted to solder the battery so that's why I mean quality instructions quality detailed instructions are the key now, when you've got these little tack switches, these 6x6 six six tack switches, it's kind of hard to know which direction they go in. So they're telling you here. I mean, they're being very specific about it. The switches are slightly rectangular and will only fit a certain way. Quality, detailed instructions. This is going to make a successful first soldering job. And that's going to be important because if you blow the first one, chances are you're not going to do it again it comes talks about how to solder the LEDs how to install them put it together and then we even have troubleshooting not lighting up did you double check the battery check your solder joints and if you still won't work send us an email and we'll try and help you you know you can't beat service like that all right so here is our blink kit again from learn to solder kit Com. So we'll open it up, get all of our parts out. We've got a nice purple circuit board there. Open source hardware. Very nice. Let's see what fit in my yes yes it will just got the adjuster here a little bit so good then we have our components here i'm going to null them out and i'll be right back Okay, one thing I noticed, and I'm sure this is done to keep costs down, the three LEDs here are all the same value. I'm measuring them at 200 ohms. So, I mean, it's going to work fine, but we have three different flavors of LED. 
red, green, and blue. And those all are going to have different forward voltages. The red is going to be about 1.8, the green is going to be around 3, 3.2, and the blue could be as much as 4 volts. So you're going to see a different brightness out of these, but that's not a big deal. I just wanted to make you aware of it. Okay, not going to do a soldering tutorial or anything along those lines today. We've done plenty of those. Now, they say this kit can be built in 30 minutes or less. I absolutely agree with that, but I want to see exactly how fast I can do it. So, we have our soldering iron with a nice, clean, and shiny tip. We have our solder. We have all of our components. We have some side cutters. And we have a timer. So, I'm going to start it, and I'm not going to stop it until it's done. Are you ready? I'm not going to rush. I'm going to go at my normal speed. So, here we go. Let's build this kit. We'll start by just clipping off the ends of these. You can pull them out of the bandoliers if you want, but clipping them off it gets rid of any of the, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, residue from the adhesive that's holding them in there. Now, according to Barry, resistors should all be readable from left to right. And I know there are some OCD folks out there who will go absolutely insane if their resistors are reversed or anything along those lines, but that's never bothered me. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about it. I didn't want to sit down in there too well. One of the tricks you can do with these things is kind of turn it like this, put it in there like that, and it'll it'll behave a little bit better for you. All right, soldering away. A little bit of solder on the tip there for thermal transfer. And here we go. Got smeared it right onto the tip that time. You just want just the coating of the solder. So we'll nip these guys off here. Trying not to cut into the solder, just cutting off the excess legs. Good. All right, resistors. L1, L2, L3. They're not labeled. I'm not going to worry about it. We'll go red, green, and blue. So that will be in the order of lowest forward voltage to highest forward voltage. Get them soldered in there nicely. Keep resetting my phone or the screen will go dark there. Make sure you guys can see the time. Okay. 
Again, it's not a race. I'm not rushing. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't bite off both of them at the same time. So I just wanted to show you. Ow. That one hit me. Luckily, I'm old, so I always have glasses on. All right, next up, switches. Switches that don't seem to want to fit in very well. Huh. That's kind of odd. I've never had issues with switches before. I think maybe the holes are too small. Hmm. That is strange. All right, I'm going to pause this. So I can look at these buttons that don't seem to want to go in properly. Since this isn't part of our actual soldering time, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Yeah. The holes are too small. That's the issue. Let me see what I have in my button collection. They're probably just the same as these. I just want to see if I have anything that might fit a little better. No. The holes are too small for the buttons. Doesn't mean you can't build the kit. The kit will still work just fine. All right, we're back at it. I'm going to use my finger. To hold that switch in. Then I'll glue. I'll glue. Well, solder is kind of electrical glue, right? I'll get those two in like that. And we'll take a closer look at them when this is done. Just want to make sure that the solder is going all the way through the plated holes and coming up above. And it is. And again, I'll show you that in just a minute. So now those are all secure, I can solder them the rest of the way in. That leaves us with the battery holder open in towards the front
There you go. Seven minutes and we'll call it 50 seconds if it works, right? If it doesn't work, well, then I'm a putz. Anyway, what I want to show you here is you can see the solder. Oh, maybe you can. Let's zoom in. Yeah, you see how the solder is wicked up through all of those contacts? Come on, focus. There we go. The solder is wicked up through all of the contacts. So we've got good connections, even though the pins do not reach all the way through the board. Then we'll put in our CR2032 battery. Positive side up. And we'll see what happens. Red. Green. Blue. Now you notice... I don't know if you can tell or not, but the blue and the red are much dimmer than the green. But a nice little kit. I really like it. And I would like to thank Learn to Solder Kits for sending out this kit to us so I could show it to you. And again, there will be links to these kits down below. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.